I started doing a lot of Canadian gigs. I think maybe I'll make this the last story. So I started doing a lot of Canadian gigs. And the gig was, um, uh, you know, it paid a lot of money, but I had a car still where I'd get a car and I'd drive up a lot of times. I'd drive up it was for a lot of reasons. One, I could bring a lot of, a lot of uh, they would sell Tylenol 222s, which was Tylenol with coating, coating. <laughs> Tylenol with coating over the counter. So I'd drive back with a trunk full of that. <laughs> Whatever, you know, I just like driving anyway. I always like driving. So I drive up, and uh, so I'm driving up, and, and Mark Breslin is supposed to have a work permit for me. So I get to the Canadian border. I'm supposed to be going to uh, Toronto. And I get to the Canadian border, and they go, uh, uh, you have your work permit. I said, no, there's one there for me. I give them my name. They go, there's no work permit here for you. You can't go. You can't go through. I go, I got to get through. You know, I, gotta, I, I, I timed it so many hours to drive there. I always like to time it. So I had a little bit of rush to me so I can get the adrenaline going, you know, but I didn't want it to be like I missed the show. So I'm sitting there talking to this guy who's in a uniform and a little hat, you know, he's, and he's a Canadian immigration officer. I said, I got to get there. There must be some way to get there. And he said, well, let me see what we can do here. Uh, he pulls out a book of regulations. This is pre-computer. This is 1981 or so. He uses huge book of regulations. He's behind a big metal desk, you know, and he pulls his book out and he opens it up and it's like just huge. And he's flipping through and he goes, ah, here we go. There is an artist exception. If you're an artist, you don't have to work papers necessary. You don't need to work papers. If you're an artist, you don't need work papers. And he's an artist. I said, yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah, I'm, or, I'm an artist. He goes, let's see, let's see. Sculptor, <laughs> singer, dancer. I don't see comedian here. No, 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 comedian's art, comedian's art. Look, look Richard Pryor and George Carlin, artists, they're artists. He goes, well, do your act. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in front of this uniformed Canadian immigration officer standing in front of his metal desk, I started to do him. When you strip down your act to just one person, when you when, once you get away from like, hey, let's welcome the next comedian, once you get away, once you put it in a sterile atmosphere, it's like just pulling you out of your little natural habitat, just throwing the monkey into the desert, out of the jungle, into the desert. Once you do that, it becomes so obviously how unfunny I was. I start doing my act, and he goes, no, stop, that's not art, that's not art. And literally, like, I just closed the book on me. Just literally closed the book. Not even going to bother looking for any of them. Not even, there's not even an unfunny guy exemption. We're just, just close the book. Just. <laughs> and this rang so true to me because that was my, it, it, it really echoed my own head. It really, I'm not an artist. I never looked at myself as an artist. When I was growing up, I had a couple of incidents that happened. Um, I remember I was like in first grade or so, the teacher said, everybody draw trees, draw a tree. So I drew my tree, I had purple leaves. I don't know why, just purple leaves. And I remember her coming by my desk and she picks it up and she goes, Richie, leaves are not purple. And she holds it up to the whole class. Leaves are not purple. Richie did not hear the assignment. And she marks, they used to, used to get three basic grades back then. VS for very satisfactory, S for satisfactory, and US for unsatisfactory. She put a big US on it, and that was that. And I thought to myself, I will never draw again. I will never draw again. I was so humiliated, I couldn't take it. I would never draw again. I never could sing. I mean, my singing literally hurts people, hurts people. Hurts people. And I got that at an early age. I remember in Baptist church one time I was singing. I must have been very loud and off key. I was singing. I was singing with the church, you know, in a hymn they were singing. And I remember one of the women from the choir literally came out of the choir, came, took the hymn away from me and said, Richie, you don't have to sing. Jesus knows you love him. Amen. So. All I had, all I had was my comedy. And I remember, I didn't even remember this. I, for, I never remembered this story about the, the, the purple leaves in the tree until 1981. I went to Paris, and I went into the Louvre, and I stood in front of this painting that had a blue horse, a blue horse. And I went, this guy's got a blue horse in the Louvre, man. I got a purple leaf tree that's worth some money somewhere, man. <laughs> I said, this is unbelievable. And really, the, the greatest tribute to the story to me was my oldest daughter, which I never even knew this. My oldest daughter, she got tattoos, like her generation, tattoos. She got a tattoo 
from the story I told her once of a jacaranda tree on her side. And that's her reminder that art is art, man, and go for whatever you want to do. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you so much for coming out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah!